Hi fam, it's Dylan's mum, Deborah. This is Dylan Friend. He gives you a back rub and says, you know, you're going well, Brian. Oh, it's special. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. Just keep showing up and find a way. Cam was so nervous he couldn't swallow water. Handed him a sheet of paper with six names and said, Sheet, we've got to cut these six blokes. Wow, shut up. I've just been barbed by Stingray, mate. I'm just yelling, oh, you saved my life, you saved my life, you saved my life. Thank you, thank you. I spent the last, I think it was a couple of weeks in jail. The deepest, darkest moments often bring about our biggest highs. Hey, Sausage. Hello, Bucko. How are you, big buddy old pal? Yeah, very good. Thanks, my friend. <laughs> Long time in the making, as you said. It has been. A pleasure, th- honour, privilege. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> That's what the, you, You've been speaking about this for... How long have you been doing this now? Uh, it's been a minute. Yeah. You've been speaking about it for a minute. So. Yeah. No, it's good. I well, think I, I finally locked you down. You were sort of dodging me left, right and centre. No, nah, we weren't friends for a little bit there. <laughs> we, yeah, that is true. We did have a falling out. Yeah. We did have a falling out. Um, which, why don't we talk about that off the top? Look, okay. you've got something in your hand there. I do. You've yeah. finally got the putter. Yes, thank you. Okay, nice, beautiful tailor-made putter. Do you want to touch it, talk about it off the top and we've have it rekindled and maybe you can tell your side, I can I'll listen, I can listen and then we'll move on. Okay. I'll tell you what actually happened. So, your more greens- Golf event. Which was a fantastic event. Yeah, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. We um so we we're playing in it was groups of three. Yeah. For the competition and myself and Fish uh were in a group of two. Correct. You'd say that would be that would handicap us a little bit playing as a group of two. Well explain the competition first, that might oh, give context. What was it? Was so it was the longest drive. Yeah, the so longest. There was a hole there that was the longest drive. Yeah. Off the drive. Um, it was combined score of three people. Yeah. Okay, so three people would go up, three drives. The longest of the three combined score wins three putters. Yourself and Zach had two people in your team, but you hit twice. You're yeah. a big boy. You swing the ball very well, club very well. Yeah. And you won. We won. You Well, you, t- you and Zach won. Yeah. But I said, you've only got two technically on a technicality. I don't want... I don't want to reward you for no, that. No, 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 no. That's not what you said. <laughs> you said that uh, we don't get the putters because <laughs> you're going to give them to the community, which we were fine with. Yeah. <laughs> Fish and I were like, you know what? Because I love we've my come- community. Yeah, you do, yeah. apparently. We've come, we've supported your day. It was it was a lot of fun. Thank you. Um, but then we had to, Fish and I had to get out of there. We found out that you've given... The prize to second place, Ryan Pappenhausen and his pro golfer teammates, which we did not agree to yeah. or agree with, yeah. completely against your principle, and uh, we wound up puddleless. Yeah, until now, <laughs> until now, and we've sorted that out. We've rectified it. Um, so it's it's done. Well Shake hands. We weren't friends though. Oh no, we, we did have a falling out. Hey, yeah. I appreciate that. How's your golf game going at the moment? You are actually a very nice golfer. Like surprisingly, not surprisingly. Like I think because I always think with the bigger boys, you're what 190, 194, 194. If I had straight legs, I'd be about one ninety eight. Yeah, yeah. The bandy so one ninety four. I always find it's actually interesting when the bigger because it's a lot more of a swing path that you got to be yeah. looking good. No, I've um, I was good before I had my knee surgery. Yeah. Uh, my last round before my knee was 77 off the stick. That was my best round. So I was really happy with that. I'd come in <clears> to, <throat> from 14 to nine within the space of sort of a month. We were playing a bit there when the boys weren't going well. Mm. So um, we had to get out and take our mind off the footy. Um, I was really enjoying it. Got struck down with the knee. I've had three rounds since and I'm going horrendously. Yeah. Oh, mate, since having Max, I've been playing a lot of golf. And that's, you know, obviously love spending time with the family family time on the weekends which i'm not complaining about but it is something you have to be playing consistent to to hit it well yeah and it's just so frustrating you've played with me i really had to sort of bite my tongue and mm. hold my clubs a little bit firmer when i played with uh you and paps because how would you explain my swing uh well from the first time we played together it's improved a hell of a lot <laughs> It's ordinary, though. <laughs> it's a bit ugly, isn't it? It it's is. It's very unorthodox. But sometimes it works. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't. The step back. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> you and Lockie O'Brien have very similar swings. Oh, goodness. That's, it's that's just yucky. Funny. Um, hey, since we played as well, like, there's so much to go through today, mate. It's, as I said, it's been a while in the making. So much I want to talk about. But crazy... Firstly, how's your knee? 
Knee's good. Yeah, knee's good. I had. Did, is that publicly known what you actually did? Are we going to talk about that? Uh, yeah, like yeah, we can talk about that. But was that known? No, it wasn't known. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I had a like a uh, well, initially they thought it was a um like a partially torn ACL. Yeah. Um, which was yeah a little bit scary. Um, sort of looking at it. Yeah. Uh, and getting the first initial diagnosis, which. You know, we had to do a few things to um, pinpoint what it was. Uh, and then uh, I ticked all the boxes to come back, come back against Gold Coast in the twos, stirred it up again, went in for a scope, and it was it was like bruising. So it wasn't, they'd unless the, uh, the tears had healed, uh, all the sheath was still intact, but there was um, noticeable bruising on my, ACL, which they said was really strange. Um, and yeah, then I pretty much got the all clear from the surgeon. He just said, go for it. So I trained really hard for uh, three or four weeks and um, one-on-one sessions with mm-hmm. Matty Bode and uh, the rehab guys. And it was it was tough. Like, you'd know what those sessions are like are in rehab. They're just lonely. And especially when the boys are doing well and the twos are, the twos are playing or they had some practice games or something and I was... Out running laps in uh, around the around the oval, so it was it was yeah difficult. And then yeah, I ticked all the boxes that I need to to come back, but I just was uh, a bit late on my run, unfortunately, and mm. timed it just poorly. So it was disappointing, but um, yeah, I mean, it, I'm pretty lucky. It could have been a lot worse. Yeah, um, and we were sort of going through my contract at the time, so I guess had I torn my ACL. I'm, could have been sitting here without a job. It's crazy how quickly that stuff can like change, isn't it? On a yep. seri- uh, actually, on a funny note, before we get into on the serious note, yeah. Are you telling me you had a bruised knee? Is that what you're saying? Basically? No, so, they, so, so you're saying you're saying basically you nearly tore your ACL, but you actually had a bruised knee. No, so <laughs> the club were running with a jarred knee, yeah. which made me look like the biggest cow. How ever. annoying! Is that they, they, go, they go, we're going to run with jarred knee, and I'm like, yeah, okay. And then I've seen some of the. Like media reporting, oh, he's got a jarred knee. And I'm like, <laughs> no one misses eight weeks of footy with a jarred knee. <laughs> I think anyone that knows what's going on, they understand that that's not true. But... No, no, no. <laughs> but it was just like, I was like, oh. And I going to all the games, I saw you at a pre, yeah. a pre-grand function. I was like, and, mate, how's your jarred knee? Oh, jarred <laughs> knee. It's like, I've nearly done my ACL, mate. <laughs> I just, I don't need that. So. I don't think they do this anymore, but back when Mick was coaching, like, I remember it was the weirdest. I don't know why clubs do this. I, I can understand it. You don't want to like, if you can potentially get time off and stuff. But I remember they used to do things like, say Brock McLean was out or something and they'd be like, he did his hammy. But they go, no, nah, he tore his calf. What does it matter what he did? Like, I don't get it why. why. <laughs> it, just... it fully doesn't. Or when they make a like a tactical late change yeah. because of weather. I reckon they did that with Charlie maybe in our second year. Because yeah. it was wet, and um, Reese Palmer came in. Ah, oh, chicken. Yeah, for his uh, for his first game for the club, because it was raining, and they said Charlie had been struck down with like a hip or something. He's like, no, no, it's just wet. Just and he's not very good on his feet, Charlie. He's not very agile or anything like that. So nah, he's yeah, he's horrendous. He's pretty he? shit. <laughs> How crazy is it, man? Like when you think about um, Carlton, and you know, we'll talk probably a lot about that today because it's what you know extremely well. I. I was lucky enough and privy to like see what was really exciting because like from my point of view I remember I must have been maybe my second or third year and you look back at that now and that draft of like Weeders, Charlie, Harry, yourself and Cunningham. Yep. Anyone else? Uh, Jesse glassman and Jesse Gooch. Jesse glassman Caster and Gooch uh, who two extremely um, talented players unfortunately not there anymore but what an incredible draft. Like, you look at that now. And at the time, maybe there's hindsight from other people going, but at the time when I was, like, playing, I was like, oh, yeah, cool. It's just, like, four young kids. Not mm. realising that, like, that would be such a stable part of the future of the club. No. And that's what the clubs sort of push when they draft a big core group of young kids. Like, I've seen North's draft hand that they've got this year. And um, I know that they'll probably be pushing the same thing. That, mm. You know, these, this is the group of kids that are going to take us forward. Um it probably doesn't happen um, as much as what it's happened with with our club, and we've been obviously there's been injuries to 
you know, Cunners and uh, Harry had stresses in his back early on. Charlie with his knee, Weeders has sort of been the stable one in the team for the for the group of us. But um, I can't, oh, I can't really think back to a time where there's been um, a group from one draft who have who have sort of played this much footy together. Yeah. Whether it be you know four or three or however many of us, there's just a lot from the same draft. So we're we're very lucky that we've been able to experience what we have together as a group and be able to, um, I guess, move on from the hurt and uh, experience the highs that they did this year. Um, but yeah, as, as a group, we're, it, it's probably, it, it may be lost on us a little bit, how lucky we are to mm. be able to go through with such a tight group of mates. Um, but yeah, it is it is special. It's, um, yeah, the, I mean, I look at sort of trade movement and stuff and, yeah, there's always blokes going here and there, and yeah, so it's, it's we're pretty lucky. It's like I, I've thought about it. I had Jared Ruffett on a pod like a year ago, and it was before Carlton had actually started like making their run. But he was sort of speaking about Hawthorne and the significance of that draft with like Buddy Roughhead, Jordan Lewis. Yeah, well, they've probably got us covered. They've they? got the cover. Okay, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> at this stage, they do. You yeah. never know. But you look at that one, which is obviously the pinnacle of a draft success, yeah. and then Melbourne when they picked up like Petrarca. Brayshaw, and then the year after, I think Oliver. Um, yeah, Oliver was our draft. He was your draft. So, yep. like, that sort of was good for Melbourne. But you look at Carlton and you go, well, if this can come together like it is shaping at the moment, um, it could be pretty pivotal for a long time of, of going forward and for you. Was it always a way? Like, did you – you said before about being mates. Like, was there a competitiveness with you for? Like, I sort of felt – like, there always is when you walk into a club, right? Like, were you always tight with the boys? Like, Yeah, def- yeah, yeah. definitely. I mean – like I said before, we went through you know all that academy stuff early days, and yeah. um, we did like we we really did everything together, and all the cooking classes with the dietitians and stuff, trying to make us grow up. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think the competitiveness sort of comes um, for me anyway as my career progressed. I probably started slow and was probably just happy to be there, whereas a lot of other um, all the high col- high quality players who come in young. You look at like Nick Dacos from mm. Carlton, Sam Walsh. Like they, I can. I'm speaking for Walsh, but I can imagine Nick knowing him as well would have set the tone from Straight sort away. of day dot. <clears throat> um, but I look at the way that Weeders competes with um, Harry and Charlie at training, making a point to go to one of them just to test himself against you know two common medalists. It's yeah, they're the best training. In different ways, so um, I try to steer clear of Weeders because he's so big. Um, he's a big boy. He's hey? just huge, he's like big quads, massive quads, massive cars. Like he's huge. So yeah, I'll just play third field. B and F too. Hey, was that was that um, expected? Like I, in, internally, you know, like players always know when you someone yeah. wins, like who's going to sort of win those comps, like because you value them, and obviously they get bought. Like I'm not saying I was shocked at all, but it was good to see. Yeah. I, I think we thought Weeders had come home with a wet sail. Yeah. Um, started a little slowly. I think he can attest to that too. But I thought he was pretty stiff not to be all Australian, to be honest. Like mm. I thought he had a great year and really got going late. His final series was great. Um, so I thought it was between him or Charlie. They were my two picks. Yeah. And suddenly, like when you have someone who wins a Coleman, but they don't win the BNF, it's like it For- shows you in a good position, really. Forwards don't win anything. No, I know. I know that's why. Except the Coleman. Except the Coleman. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. Hey, speaking of um, Carlton, like this is man. There's so much to get through today, and I hope we do this. This I hope I do this justice because I know a lot of people would love to hear what you've got to say, and and I'll try my best. But I think you've been in such an interesting period of like the club, like from when you got there to where it is now, and only just like. Really, it was like in the last three months. Yeah. Like, it's not like it's been there for like a year. So, like, it's crazy how quick. Because when we had that game of golf, yeah, you were. I hope you don't know me. So, like, you weren't playing at that period. Like, yeah. you were sort of on a little bit on the outer. Fish and I were playing twos. You were both playing twos. Yeah. Fast forward, you're an incredibly important part of that team. If you didn't get injured, you would have played a really crucial role in finals, and you re-signed with the club. So, like, it's so quickly how things can like change. As well as the club turning around and actually playing good footy when it looked like nearly Vossi was going to get sacked. Yeah. Like, how fucking weird is that? It was, mate, it was bizarre. It was, um, the middle of the year was a really strange period.
period because we probably limped over the line in some games early too where we weren't playing our our best footy but we got we got lucky and I think that's similar to sort of how we were last year um, where we had games against Hawthorne and Port where we gave up sort of eight, nine, ten goal leads and they were within a kick in the last minute of the game. Mm. So I think that's something we'll address this year. But um, the way we're able to sort of pull it together uh, and get back, like it's such a cliche, but get back to basics and not sort of Mm. overdo it. Sometimes in those situations, um, you can try too hard and the the more you try, the more you just fuck it up. I have this chat with everyone all the time about like, I'm telling you now, no one's training harder than North Melbourne at the moment. No. <laughs> like, it, everyone in the industry knows that North Melbourne are training harder than what Collingwood are. Yep. It, it, but, like, nearly the better you are, the easier it is. And, and don't get me wrong, you have to put in that work to get to that stage. Like, they're a young club, they're learning fundamentals, all these things. But all those times when Carlton were terrible, you know how fucking hard that was? Because you have to work so much and you're nearly trying too hard. You're forcing oh. it, but you have to leave no stone unturned. Yeah, we. So, I just remember that like some of the sessions we had. Were you in Hobart with us when Bolts took us down there? I think I was delisted by then. Okay, so yeah. um, I just remember it was like a- Your dad delisted me. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were in Hobart um, on a pre-season camp, a second one for the pre-season. And I think we'd come back late October that year, the young boys too. So, you know, we'd, be, we'd put in about a four-month shift already. And we had like a 13K session. Um, and then we had to ride up Mount Wellington on these bikes. It was so hard. I, my bike was wouldn't change gear. So I was stuck in the heaviest gear, just pedaling. Daisy got me through it and was telling me stories, thank God, because otherwise I was nowhere. You know, like... At the um, at the end of like some runs, some hard preseason sessions where young kids in their first year, it's like their first full session, and they're just gassed. Yes, and like blokes jump in and <laughs> run with them right at the end. Cruz was pushing me up <laughs> up the mountain <laughs> with his. He'd already finished like yeah. an hour before me, and he was pushing me up. I just felt hopeless, but it was so hard. Mm. And I think we'd just come second or third last, and. You really do. You train so much harder when you're down the bottom because you're just trying to you're trying to find ways to fix it. So I And there's no there's no answer to that either though. Like it's not like you can't not train hard. You no. have to do it, but you just this has been the craziest thing for me is like looking at Carlton Wright and the, the biggest thing that I'm so happy with what the club did this year is they just kept backing people in. And like there's been so many times over that period where like, you know, Bolts was in like, you know, I had rats, Mick Bolts, um, you know, Johnny Barker in there as well somewhere. And then after that, obviously, Teague, now Vossi. And there's been so many periods where you're still training as hard. Like, I, I, you know, not to take anything away from where the club is now, you're probably still training as hard as you are, but that actual click of it taking to the next level, like what was it? Di- did you notice the difference or was it just it, it just, just actually did happen? Like Confidence is a huge thing. Yeah. Um, I didn't play the Gold Coast game that – we sort of started to get the ball rolling. That was our our um, win streak, however many, however many we went on. Um, but that's when it started. Yeah. Um, and you could see at quarter time, like it all just sort of clicked. I reckon early in the year, probably overusing the ball, our entries were really poor, we were going wide. And it was just simple, straight, quick footy, yep. not overdoing it. And you could see the, the change and the belief in the players that that came off at once, they're like, yeah, shit, this, this works. Um, and it helps when you had, had blokes like Ches throughout the middle of the year mm-hmm. stood up when we were going shit house. Charlie obviously had a great year. We just turned it around. Like, it's, you had, we had our good players start to play really well. But the way we were playing and the role players, like Matt always had a really good year. Love him. Yeah, Matt Cottrell had a really good year. Love him. Um, a heap of blokes who sort of put their hand up, found their niche and really committed to their roles. So it was really evident that there was a change, not so much a change in mentality, but a a belief in themselves that they were able to do it. And 
I think throughout that time, throughout our uh, win streak, we would we sort of had a, a heap of injuries. Like Youngie and I had to ruck two or three games. Machine guard. Yeah, it was so sore. I was <laughs> jabbing my shin up because I got a massive hit against Hawthorne. Um, so like there were a heap of blokes coming in. I think we had a few blokes go down our back line and the midfield changed a bit. Matt Kennedy hurt his knee, so another guy came in. There was a heap of stuff, heap of moving parts, but people just filled the filled the role so well. Um, and there was a belief, it was as strong a belief as I've felt mm. since I've been at the club where it genuinely felt like it clicked and you went into every game confident. Crazy. Um, yeah, and it was it was a great time to be a part of the club because we've been starved of success for so long, but in my eight years, we haven't even looked like playing finals except for last year and we fell over at the final hurdle. So it was exciting. Even when I wasn't playing, it was still exciting. Like, I was so happy for the boys because I know yeah. how hard they've worked. What about with like internally as well? Like It's so easy and, and we've seen this, you've seen this, anyone that's been at Carlton's seen this over the last sort of like 10 years is, and this is no fault of anyone. It's like, but when you do lose, you you, you look in and you can look at that blame game of, this is any club, like, yeah. Mind you, not not knowing that Carlton's like, but when you are losing, it's very internalised, and you can start not flowing. But like, what happened this year at Carlton for it to like still just keep backing each other in? Because like, how much internally was the narrative of the outside getting in? Like, what it, it, it mustn't have much, or did it? Um, no, did that I fucking make any sense at all, or was I just like vomiting? No, like, that was okay. Yeah, I understood. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, what I'm trying to say is. <laughs> It was so hectic outside. And I feel like in the past and with other less successful clubs or in the past with Carlton, that had infiltrated the inside. But this time, I feel like the coaches and the players were aligned inside and were like, fuck what's going on. The board, uh, the coach, uh, maybe not the board, but the um, the CEO, the GM were like, you know what, we're fucking backing everyone in. Let's just stay together. And it actually did turn. Yeah, I think like... It's hard not to notice it because the fans are so passionate. Yeah. I'd understand that. You'd understand that growing up as Carlton yeah. fans. Like, I was mad Carlton mm. as a kid. Um, so, we're lucky to have an innate understanding of how they feel and the want for success. So, that's that's not lost on me. Um, and it might be different for other boys because they've grown up supporting other clubs or stuff like that but that's not lost on me so i understand the frustrations that the fans had uh the talk from the media and whatnot that never infiltrated the club mm -hmm. um and in years gone by where things would often get out of the club i feel like everything not saying anything bad happened or yeah. anything like that but your bruised knee yeah my bruised yeah, <laughs> bruise knee <laughs> everything stayed tight yeah. Everything that the players said to one another, everything the coaches said to the players, like everything was in house, and uh, there was such an alignment for the group where it almost feel like we didn't really change a whole lot, mm. but it was just it just clicked. Just kept doing your thing. Yeah, so it was it was nice. That's really cool. Yeah. The um, yeah, I like that because it's. I think the easy option would have been to just sack another coach mm. like that's an easy option but to just keep sticking in and and you look what happens it's just fucking crazy yeah it, it was it was cool like not to say that it's changed forever like you still got to go back and do it next year yeah and that's more important than anything but yeah it's um i just feel like it's an exciting time to be a supporter on what you were saying before about the fan stuff right i when i was um playing footy i was really didn't think much about it like i was like oh the fans bloody hell why are they getting so upset and <clears throat> Now that I'm outside of it, I get it, man. I actually get it now. Like I am more of a supporter than I am inside the four walls. And it's not personal. It's just like these people, like when I went to these like games and I went up to Brisbane, I went to the Melbourne game. When you're in that, man, like this is their life. Like it's such a beautiful thing. And I, like, I say it with like all my heart. Like they, you, you walk to the game, you see families dressed in fucking Carlton stuff. It keeps relationships between parents and kids together. And I was like, fuck, this is, I didn't get this as a play. I didn't understand that when I was playing. I didn't understand, I didn't appreciate how special Carlton is. And even like reflecting now, like everything I've done since finishing, it's the same people supporting, man. Yeah. Like it's an incredible, I get goosebumps talking about it. It's, it's an incredible 
incredible community of people that yeah they they have high standards but like they will back you to the end of the degree and like i'm just indebted to a lot of carlton as a football club not as a um not as a you know the people in it but like the actual club the emblem and the supporters of it are incredible people they are um and we were lucky to grow up around the club so we're probably i mean a different branch of that supporter where we were quite privileged yeah to sort of be inside but i mean parents and adults and whatnot they tip their hard earned in to support the club mm. every year year on year without fail like i remember doing membership calls yeah. and stuff and calling um people who've been like 70 80 year members 60 year members like it's amazing to have that sort of commitment to uh or affiliation to a football club where you like some people they live interstate like they might have only seen who knows 30 yeah. 40 games and they've lived for 70 years it's it's incredible to watch um the commitment that not just carlton's fan base but other fan bases as well yeah like, yeah it's a, this is like obviously we know this one we're privy to it but yeah. like it's a it's a thing across the whole base people the, the, <clears throat> the support uh that the players receive far outweighs criticism yeah i think it's an amazing industry to be a part of it particularly when your club's up and going which we haven't experienced much so it was a pretty dark at one stage yeah. there for us but i mean the last couple of years when we got on a roll it's it's so exciting the fans yeah. get so loud they're so passionate they're all cool. they all they really want regardless of what they say it's whether effort. it they want effort but they want you to succeed yeah and they want that so that they feel a part of it so it's that's that's why it's sort of easy to park the criticism for some yeah um or for me anyway because i know I know the place it's coming from. Yeah. No, it's, it's a great point. I think like I wish I knew that earlier. Same. It's not personal. It's like they just love you. Yeah. You know. Um, the put around um, your position stuff, footy, you play an incredible role in the team of being like this versatile type player that can go forward, back, ruck. Where do you see it? Like what's your opinion? Do you like the versatility do you like do you want to have time to cement in one position i know you'll do whatever you, you have to do for the team but what's your pref what's your preference uh well i mean at the start of the year i was sort of just plugging holes so i think that's probably why i, f I found myself in and out of the team because mm. i sort of get thrown getting thrown around and i just sort of couldn't nail a role and that's when we were going ordinary and we were trying to find something that works so i was probably the easy one to, to drop because i just wasn't set in a position um when i came back in uh the ruck's hard don't get me wrong the ruck's bloody hard being my size and eyeballing you know max gone who's got 20 centimeters and 15 kilos on me mm -hmm. it's, and knowing i've got to run full tilt into him man i couldn't think of anything worse yeah, than it's, playing ruck. it's like, hard it is the shittest position it's ever. so hard <laughs> it's so hard so it's it yeah, I mean, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy the challenge. I enjoy being around the ball. Well, that's what I mean. And someone as versatile as you, like, it would get you so involved. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think my role going forward is probably still as a forward. If they need me to play as, as a ruck, I'll do it. Um, but I was often the option to go spare man back or um, something like that. So, I mean, I'm happy to play anyway. But, yeah, I think the versatility, I mean, it's spoken about so much not just for me but other players as well versatility can sort of can sort of grow your standing in the game but it can really pigeonhole you as well because if you're the one to be thrown around you can often be the first one out mm. um so as much as being able to play multiple positions is so important but finding your niche yeah is uh yeah it's, and i think that's forward rock for me i i agree with what you're saying but i also I like it, and I'll use an old coach of ours uh, um, motto here, like growth mindset. You know, if you're putting your growth mindset, Brendan Bolton's hat on, I think for me for so long, I was, you know, and I used to have these chats with your old man when I was at Carlton. I was like, what do I do to, got to do to get in the team? And he's like, mate, there's a position there, a small forward, all you got to do is tackle. And I was like, no, I'm a backman. I, don't want to play. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to play forward. I'm a backman, fuck you. And he goes, mate, there's a position there. Like, no, nah, I'm a backman. And I just was so like, steadfast on just like not listening to anyone until i realized like just embrace 
you know, whatever's there, if there's an opportunity, things open, things change, like be be like, you know, let the wind just like flow with it. If you need it here, you need it there. And you look at someone like, oh, personally for me, the reason I love watching you play now is like I see it as nearly like a, a potential of you will be as important to Carlton as what Jeremy Howe is to Collingwood. Like you have that opportunity to go, hey, we want to win the game, let's fucking throw him forward. Or if we want to like save the game, let's throw him back. And I love having... You know, from a fan, I love having you doing that. And it's like, maybe it's with him, with Jeremy Howe. I remember like chatting to him once and he was like, I love that I don't have a position. So it's like... Yeah. he Well, he went forward against us late and kicked three and a quarter. Yeah. So, yeah. I, there's a lot of guys who do it better than me. Um, At the and, moment. Yeah. But, oh, I'm going to get a wriggle on and get yeah, a kick. Um, but yeah, I mean, you look at uh, the standings. At, like even... When you get drafted, there's so many kids that come in and they won't. Like, they'll come in as a mid and they'll be a halfback. Like, it's, 90% of mids never play mid. No. Nah, like, and But even blokes that come in as halfbacks, they play mid, they get moved around. Like, Doc. Doc's an all-Australian halfback. He's playing in the midfield. Um, oh, and there's more examples. That's yeah. the only one I can think of off the top of my head. But it is, it is about being fluid and um, being adaptable. And I think... The coaches look fondly on on you if you sort of take that opportunity do and, and grasp it as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I will play anywhere. Um, I enjoy the challenge playing. Anywhere. Like I went back to the twos and played down back because I see that heaps. Yeah, because because <laughs> the chat was that I was there was a spot down back. Yeah, and that that Great was practice. Yeah, and that was going to be that was going to be me. Mm. So I go back for one week, play back, and the next week I'm full drunk. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. Yeah. Seen a few coaches um, through your time. Have you? What have you learnt from them? Good, bad, and indifferent. What have been some of your favourite coaches, and what have been some of maybe the big lessons or mentorship sort of programs through that period with with them? Well, early early on, I, in my first year, I played. Um, I was actually injured a little bit at the start of the year. I had some soft tissues, trying to adjust to the loads and whatnot. Um, so I played eight games towards the back end of the year, but in my second year, I probably wasn't going very well and, and Bolt stuck with me and played me every week. He had that philosophy of playing the young kids, um, which I'm forever th thankful for. Mm -hmm. um, he gave me my first opportunity at AFL level. I was going shit house in my second year and he backed me in to play every week. Um, and it was, if anything, it was a great experience because, you know, it's... As a kid, being in and out of the side may be worse for the psyche than playing shit, but you're playing AFL. Yeah. Um, Bolts, in his first couple of years, he was great for me. Um, like I said, he, he really gelled well with the young boys, gave us an opportunity. Um, really, him and Neil Craig, who was my mentor coach at the time. Craigie. Craigie. Great man. Very hard Hard Very hard. Man. Yeah. Did I ever tell you my funny story about Craig? No, you haven't. <laughs> I told this on this club, I think, but it's a fucking funny story. And I, I don't know I don't know any grudges towards this, but it was just like my final kick in the teeth at like when I was like leaving. I knew that it was probably done at this point. I remember getting a game. And I love Bolt. Like Bolt is one of my favourite people. Yeah. I, I really do. I speak about that actually a lot, don't I, Darcy? Yeah. Thank you. So I just want to preface by saying that. But I remember like they pulled me into the office and they're like, <clears throat> We're gonna play this week. I was like, thank you. They're like, you probably don't deserve it. I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> so it was more the fact that I wasn't playing that well, yeah. but they said opportunity presents at a really Fun weird time, time sometime. You know, you probably don't deserve it, which I didn't, mm. but we're going to play you. Here's your chance. And I remember I went into that game and like the first bounce, ball got kicked out, like bang, just went straight through my hands. And I was like, oh God. Anyway, <laughs> it's just like manifesting into this. Like I just couldn't break out of it. Anyway. I'd already fucked up a bit and then it got to like the second quarter and I just tore my I've never done my hammy before in my life and just tore the fuck out of it like I'm talking I couldn't even walk yeah. like it was that bad and I remember sitting on the bench going this is it like yeah. you know like the, it, it wasn't like Joe was just like yeah this is this is unfortunately this is it like take it in this is the last time you'll be out of here and um, I remember then walking in the next day and remember the DI board at the yes. club. So there used to be this thing called a desire indicators. Was yeah. that what it was? Something like that. Something like that. And you could go like 
but basically a desire indicator was like chasing, spoiling. Craigie's pressure acts. Yeah, pressure acts. And they were sort of subjective. They weren't really, it was more how he judged them. Very, not, very subjective. Yeah, it was sort of like <laughs> he judged them. Yeah. Not really. It was like a stat. It was like what he thought. Jonesy had like a million pressure acts yeah, in a game. Like if he, <laughs> if he liked you, you'd have like a million. And if he didn't, you wouldn't. And I think the average to like get a game was like 14 yeah. points. So it was like you could have minus points as yeah. well. So like you, you might have 30 points, but you might have 15 minuses. Yeah, so you'd you, have 15 points. You missed two tackles and you lost 12 points. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I remember like going in and walking in that Monday going, okay, I've torn my hammy out for the rest of the year. It's done. Like that was my last pitch to like, you know, if I had played a good game, could have finished off the season. I remember walking in, I walk up to the DI board and I looked at my name and I'm like going and I saw it and I was like, fuck, not bad. Like 14 pressure acts. That's pretty good in a half. I was like, oh, wait a minute. That's minus 14. <laughs> and I'd had the record. This is just, so I had the record of minuses for the whole season out of anyone in a half of footy. Very bad. Very bad. <laughs> and I just remember going like, mate, just like I'm fucked anyway. I'm not coming back. Like just give me just a break. Get- <laughs> like I don't need to have minus 14 here. Um, and, you used uh, to have to sit with him and watch him all too. Yeah, and I think at that stage I was Didn't like, you know what, like, fuck this, mate. I'm not even going to sit down with you for this no. one. <laughs> um, it's done. Yeah. Anyway, so. Yeah, he was great for me. <laughs> <laughs> I did like Craig as well, yeah, but it was he, just quite He was funny. great. He, yeah. Uh, as I mentioned before, I came in and um, I was probably, I, I really didn't know how to work. Like I was just happy to be there. I was a poor runner when I came in. Didn't really understand training standards. Um, I was probably a bit scared, tentative. Mm-hmm. I was only slight when I came in. I was 78 kilos um, and against men. I was 17 when I got drafted. So, um, yeah, that was that took a bit of... Uh, adapting to and Craigie was great and sort of laying it out telling me how it is which is how I like to be coach yeah um Vossi's much the same like I've had conversations with him where I'm like mate, just tell me how it is yeah I don't want to I mean it's if I've if I'm getting dropped or something I don't want to be told oh you know you need, you need to go back to the twos and do this yeah when they just rate this bloke better than me yeah just tell me that yeah I'm happy with that I can deal with that so um not that that's happened, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, we've we've had some tough conversations, and it's good. I respect it. Um, I think that stemmed from how I was brought up. Mm. Dad was pretty tough, so um, yeah, that's how I like to be coached. And um, he's given me that opportunity to play <clears throat> play in a way that I sort of can express myself, and it's good. Let's talk about your old man. You said then tough conversations. What was it like? I, I hate asking this fucking question because I get it all the time, yeah. and like on a on a lesser scale than you, obviously, because it's you know it's um really five flags between us, so five flags, yeah, yeah, that is true. One half for me and Jim. Have you yeah. guys got what one each? Yeah, one each. That's oh, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we hopefully you get one more. <laughs> yeah, well, Serge has two, so no. okay, yeah, well, you got a fair few then. Yeah. Um, what was? What was it like growing up with? Like, I'm actually interested in this because I feel like I would get asked this a bit. I'd love to hear your answer. What was it like growing up with your old man? Speaking to you about it before, like, yeah. I never knew any different. I was, I had a very privileged upbringing, um, had everything I could have asked for, uh, grew up in a very stable household, got two brothers, loved my family very much. Um, it just so happened that my dad played footy uh, and he was good at it. So, I mean, I was. As a kid, I used to talk about him all the time, brag about him. It was it was great, and um, he got to, you know he was I got to be around the club that I barrack for because of him. So I, was, I think I'm very lucky to to have him as a dad. Um, and yeah, I, I I really didn't know any difference. So I yeah. can't <clears throat> when people ask. It's sort of hard to say. It's such a shit question, too, it, isn't it? it? Just yeah, say, it is. This is my dad, man. I'm not sure. I didn't yeah, have another one. No. Nah. It's so hard to say, like, oh, it must have been hard. Well, no, it wasn't hard. It yeah. was actually awesome. It was just, pretty easy. It was just normal. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do remember, though, in saying that, like, when I was there, and, and not comparing myself to you at all, but, like, the father-son thing, and you obviously get the comparisons and stuff, and I, I say this a lot. It didn't bother me at all. I loved it. I actually – did it have an effect on me in my career? No. If anything, it helped. Like, it was awesome. I really enjoyed it. Not once did I ever feel pressure 
all those bits. But how was that for you? Because it was a bigger, it was a lot bigger scale. Like, you know, you had your grandfather, your dad, and then you, yep. you know, all in the number one, even though you were number two in your first year. Around that, like, romanticness of the Italian heritage, Carlton, like, it was mm. built up a lot more than any other father son really had been at the time. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, I remember getting drafted and I was driving through Q Junction the next day and dad and my face are on the billboard above the new Clifton, Murph's joint. Yeah, um, uh, uh, Putinesca. Putinesca, yep. yeah. So we're on a billboard, a Carlton billboard, um, straight away. So, I mean, I was probably pushed because it was, we were going shit house at the time. We just finished last. Um, so we needed the, the good news story. We had Weeders as a pick one and me as the father son so um i always say it didn't affect me but the more i mean i'd always say publicly it didn't affect me um but probably i think subconsciously it it may have the expectation of it all and wanting to wanting to live up to expectations and um sort of prove the club right and prove, prove people right and um I think I sort of had to, it took me a while to move away from being Sauce's kid yeah. and being myself, which I think I've become so comfortable with over the last, probably since 2019, um, where I've started to play some better footy. I've been able to grasp the concept that I'm not going to be my dad, I'm not going to be my grand, granddad, so just be me. Mm-hmm. And... That, I think, led to me being able to be myself around the club, um, play in a way that is, um, it makes me happy, like it may, and, and it sort of fits my role in the team rather than trying to you know, be the best, yeah. like having an understanding of you're not going to be the best, but you can be the best you, which I think it, it I wish I'd known earlier. Like I wish in my first year I could have gone, I could go back to myself and go, hey, listen, it's not going to happen exactly how you want it to. Yeah. But fit this mould and you'll fit in perfectly. Mm. So I think that took a little while to grasp and um, I'm really thankful that I learnt that lesson because now I'm, I'm really happy. I'm um, obviously staying at the club. I'm happy with the role that I'm playing, but it's... Um, it, it put a, puts a better value on my performance than trying to meet yeah. others' expectations. Uh, and I'm, yeah, I'm really thankful I learned that lesson because otherwise I, it just would have been, I just would have fallen by the wayside and that would have been my career done and I'd forever regret it because I would have been trying to live up to something that I just couldn't. Yeah. I like that answer, man. That's Thank good. You. It's pretty deep, huh? It is, but it's, it's, it's honest and it's truthful. Like, I think, <clears throat> yeah. I'm just just reflecting. Like I did, yeah. I don't know. It's I, I agree with what you're saying for you, obviously, because that's your journey. I'm just sort of thinking of my own thing. I don't it, think that's too. I don't think it's like. I think that I always like. I always was my own person, anyway. So I don't think I ever really compared myself at all, and my worth wasn't. I I, I always actually didn't really. I personally, um, compared my worth to things so i'd be like oh fuck you know when i was down and young i'd be like fuck i'm not living up to this of course but i think one thing i've been really lucky with and i'm sure you have too is like my mum and dad like they just love me like no matter what i do so it's like even as a kid you know if i it it works both ways right like there's times where i think they're going to be really proud of me which i'm sure they are yeah but like so for example like you know if i do something that's just like completely ordinary mm. and they're, they're like that's awesome yeah and then like re- recently just like released a book which i thought was a pretty cool thing and they're it's like cool. yeah that's cool yeah. and it's the same and i'm like <laughs> so they don't it doesn't for them it's just like it doesn't no. they don't give a shit which is so cool because it's made me like so much no matter what i do as long as like i enjoy it and i'm happy they're like it's cool they're like we don't really care that you wrote a book as long did you did you enjoy it yeah cool that's that's cool so yeah they're our biggest supporters so it was it was different for me too because um i came into the club and dad was working there this is yeah yeah so what that, the hell was that that would have been fucking weird it was weird because i think some boys not not guys like you who i'd had a bit to do with before i came in but boys who didn't know me probably thought 
um, that navigating a relationship with me would have been difficult because mm. I lived with the bloke who was in charge of their contracts. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, yeah, it was, it was strange. But as I said, like I came in, I didn't know any different. Yeah. Um, and it, all that really sort of blew up when he got the flick and whatnot. But it, I mean, it wasn't, there wasn't much in it. Like I never really spoke to dad about footy when I got home. I was mm. all footied out. You know, the days, the days with bolts were long when we were trying to sort of improve. They were long days. Like well, that's the part, right, just with that, like your old man then, right, you, you get drafted, bolts is coach, your dad's list manager, and there's a lot of work that not you, not you in turn, but like those two are doing together. Yeah. So like you're, I'm assuming, training, coming home and bolts and your old man are still fucking working together trying to build this club and yeah. like that would have been so weird. Like, yeah. no, it wouldn't have been weird because it's your life, but like from an outside perspective, you've got to probably admit that's pretty. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's an it's, it's a situation that doesn't happen a lot. No, and I think that's why people would have found it difficult to sort of get to know me because yeah. you know they would have been treading so carefully in case they thought in case you know I went home and said something to dad, mm. which I didn't. <clears throat> um, but yeah, it was it was. Um, man, I, I really enjoyed having dad around the club. It yeah. was cool. Um, and he he made it really clear that he sort of kept his distance from players because it would make his job hard if he became if he had a relationship with them. Yeah. Um. So like you'd be able to attest to the fact that he was never downstairs. No. Like he'd be watching training from the stands. Um. He'd never really walk around and have chats with anyone. Like he was he really kept to himself and just did what he had to do. Um, which I think in part was to protect me as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, man, I, I, I loved that yeah. being around the club. So, um, yeah, it was cool. So it was disappointing when it all blew up, but, um, it was, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I want to go to that point, like early days as well, like from my point of view, that you said before around, you know, obviously I knew you and whatnot, but that was a really weird time for me. And I suppose there's, times where you when your career isn't is under threat and you're not proud of who you become and i've spoken a lot about like my mindset back then in terms of like just trying to survive and mm. you know negativity and those all those things and it was such a fucking weird time because like you know i did have this somewhat relationship with your dad and then he came to the club as is is this um list manager and sort of as he you just said then his role but like, we did have a chat about this one day, he goes mm. oh, i can't get close to people because my role is to it's not to be your mate yeah and it's like that movie Draft Day, have you seen yeah. it with Kevin Costner? It's yeah, sort of like that in a sense of like, you know, he doesn't like to befriend people because yeah. like things can sort of happen. And, and I get that. I'm not saying that he wasn't friendly, like he was definitely friendly, but you just can't be chummy. And I remember there was just so many weird times where like, this isn't a sauce thing. This isn't a list manager thing. Like I was just like, you just avoid fucking contact. You <laughs> just hate it. In, in the hallways, I'd see him just be like, fuck you. Yeah. You know, like, and I tell him this now. Like yeah. it's so. Far, I'd love to chat with him about it one day. But ultimately, like he was there for a role to bring people in, and it's footy is a business. Like as much as you want to be relationships with people, it's a business, and I totally yeah. respect that. Like it's it's such an interesting world that I'm so lucky to be a privy of, and I loved that whole experience of that. Like I learned so much from it. Um, but interestingly, as well, like us being mates, you, you know, Nick Graham, Dan Gorringe. Yeah. Um, Christian Jacks, like all these guys that you know are your close friends and still to this day, your dad ultimately, rightfully so, <laughs> delisted and got rid of us. Which yeah. again, I'm not. Compl it's it's the right move, but it must have been a little bit weird. It was anyway. I got close to he got rid of. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it was. I mean, the turnover at the time was huge. Like I reckon. There, I would have played in just my first three years alone maybe 70 blokes yeah. 80 blokes like i reckon we did 13 list changes my year 14 then 15 the year after mm. so we cut the list pretty deep um i think dad will admit to the fact that he probably cut it a bit deep um but it was yeah there was a lot like it was hard because that was and you guys were great with it obviously um we're still mates, even despite the putter saga. But um, it's payback. <laughs> yeah. 
Playback. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. Ruined your job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was weird. It was weird, but... I mean, the blokes... You guys never really saw it like that. No, no, you, I didn't. At least, I, yeah, I, I, I at don't least think, you haven't told me. <laughs> no, no, no one... I don't think anyone saw it like that. I just think it's a funny dynamic to talk about because yeah. for an outside perspective, like I think everyone listening will be like, yeah, that is a bit weird, but yeah. it wasn't no. because, it, you know, it's weird to get delisted, yeah, but like I wasn't shocked and I knew what was happening. And yeah. All those things, I have so much respect for everyone at the club that did it, but I still remember the day like I walked in and was there and it wasn't stupid. I knew what was going to happen, but it was like, you know, your old man... Bolts, Craigie, um, Johnny Barker. There's probably like six or seven people there. And just mm. like, I, I think I wish, the only one thing I wish I could do is go back and record and film my delistings. <laughs> I'd love to record those videos because in my head it was such a special time. Like, yeah. I actually think that when we when that left, like it was actually such a beautiful moment. Because so I was sitting in that room with um, them and they said, look, this one's going to happen. And I just sort of said like, I'm just so grateful for the opportunity. We both hugged part ways. And I actually remember, I don't know if your old man remembers it, but like we left the room, shook hands. Everyone was like awesome. Like I think I was like nearly emotional because I was just like, this is, I really appreciate it. Like it's been a hard 12 months to like finish. And then your dad actually came down and we just had like a big hug for like five minutes in the locker room. That's a bit weird. Yeah, naked. <laughs> and, <laughs> no, it wasn't naked, but it was, um, it was just really cool. It was like for the first time I was like, fuck it. I don't have to avoid you in the hallway anymore. Like, it was just like, it was just <laughs> He's dumb. an angry man too. Like, yeah. he, he can give some mean looks. Yeah. But, so. um, no, it was just really good. I, I I think it's a cool experience. Not that you've been delisted and, and nor will you. I'm sure you'll retire and be very, very um, happy and float off in the distance. But for anyone out there that don't fear a delisting, I reckon they're really interesting things. Yeah. Unless you don't expect it. Don't try and get delisted. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I think they're, I think that's something that you will never experience if, this sounds weird. I'm like pro delisting. I'm not pro delisting. I'm just saying <laughs> it was an enjoyable experience. Um, speaking of when, like, obviously I left the club then, so I don't know what happened next. But what, so your old man was staying and then what happened? How was that for you guys when things didn't, like, did he, I actually don't know what happened there. Did he leave? Or no, he got was flicked. It, got flicked. So, yeah. How, so Bolts left, Tiggy comes in, new president, new CEO. And then was yeah. that weird for you when your dad left and you stayed? Uh, the whole situation with dad was pretty messy. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was a lot of. It was. I remember it being reported about in the media a lot. Ben had got to the club, so Ben and I were um, were, were brought into it. Yeah, we, yeah. we were brothers. Yeah, yeah and still are. And, yeah, still are. <laughs> and um, and we got brought into it as well. And um, mum and dad had done such a a huge job of shielding us from all the media stuff. When we were young, um, obviously it's unavoidable when you get to a footy club. But in situations like this where it really didn't involve us, for, Dad was really disappointed that Ben and I were brought in. Mm. Um, and it would have been hard for him to navigate that because he's obviously trying to sort of look after himself but also protect us and we're players of the club. Yeah. So, I mean, I didn't I didn't talk to him about it Um it, but yeah, it was a bit of a weird time because it was just so, um, so covered in the media, mm. and it was such a big talking point, particularly for Carlton at the time because we weren't going very well. Yeah. Um, so it was that was that was pretty difficult, and um, I mean the club went one way, and I was obviously always going to have my dad's back. So I mean, at times it probably looked like I was against the club as well, which. I mean, 2019, how old would I have been? I was 20, 21. Mm. Um, I was, I was, things would pop up on Twitter and I'd like and retweet yeah. it. And <laughs> it's just like, stay off Twitter. Man. Oh, I'm just thinking, like, looking back, and I'm like, why am I, why would I do that? <laughs> <laughs> just knowing, knowing it's going to get a stir out of someone. It's yeah. just like, what? So, I mean, I did things um, that I probably regret a bit during that time. I'm sure all parties. Did as well, but it was a really difficult one for everyone to navigate for dad yeah. because Ben and I are involved and sort of he was trying to um, protect himself a little bit. The club, because they were sort of parting ways with someone who is sort of in the fabric of the club for and sure. go a different way. Um, and for 
Ben and I, whose dad's getting the sack. So it's yeah. it's a it's a weird situation. It was just remember, yeah, awkwardish. Or it, it was awkward because I remember having to sit down with um, the like Lloydy and stuff and talk through it, and it's a hard one to talk through. And I pretty much just sort of once I'd taken the emotion out of it because I just wanted to like at the end of the day I'm a cult football club. Yeah, you want to play footy. I just want to play footy. I need to get on with it. So I I just said, mate, this situation is never going to happen again. Yeah, there is absolutely zero learnings we can take from this situation yeah. because it will not happen again, unless Max gets unless it, and yeah, you're, and, and I'm the list manager. The list manager. Yeah. yeah, but it's highly like it's not going to happen in Lloydie's time in footy or the coach's time in footy or my time in footy. Like it's not going to happen again. So I'm just like you know what, let's park it, um, move on. Yeah, I want to play footy. I was playing all right. I was in the team. Like I just needed to. It's mature. It's good. Yeah. Well. Except for the like and the shit on Twitter. Yeah, but that we learned from that. Yeah, we that was one learning. Yeah. <laughs> we learned from that. No, it's really I appreciate your honesty, man. It's a like you said, it's it's I think it's just fascinating to to hear and I'm sure I'm not sure if I'm sure people would want to hear about it, but even as a mate, like I was just like thinking I actually probably regret not reaching out and, and showing my support a little bit more for you because I was like that just would have been hard to navigate. It was it was it's just a weird situation. A weird, yeah, it's like, not something you can really re- mm. No, nah, yeah. like no situation for anyone losing their job's nice. No. Like it's doesn't matter what industry you're in <clears throat> or who it is. Um, it was all just very close to home. Yeah. Uh, and it was like I love my family very much, so I'm going to stick up for them. For sure, as uh, I'd do the same thing. Yeah. Was there ever any any time? And I don't know now. Obviously, the answer is that you you know you know you bleed blue, like you navy blue you signed on. But was there periods there where it did look like you were like, well, is my career going to finish here? Like, is it possible for me to stay here with, you know, is it too close to home? Is there too much sort of going on? Do I have to look at something else? No, I don't, no. Um, Whenever I've come out of contract, I feel like there's always a lot of talk around, is my best footy going to be elsewhere? I can't picture myself anywhere else. So it's, I mean, is it? I don't know, um, but I don't really. I don't want to explore that. Mm. Um, I might have to one day. Hopefully, I don't. Mm. Um, but I'm really happy with where I'm at at the moment. I, um, I've had really good chats with Vossi and the other coaches. They place a value on the position that I play. I feel like I'm valued by my teammates, and um, I think that. I can play an important role in the team in the future, and um, Carlton's an exciting club to be a part of at the moment. Yeah. We've we we the boys played so well in the finals. I was so not jealous, but I mean, you don't play footy to to sit there. watch that stuff. You play it to play. I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was yeah it was a it was hard to watch, but. At the same time, I was so happy you're hungry, for man, to yeah. do it again. And like, I, I, I don't like your language today. Like, you're talking a little bit like, can you fucking just shut the fuck up? Like, you're in the best twenty-two, fuckhead. Just say that. What's What's wrong with my language? Well, I feel like you've just been saying, if I'm here, if I'm just, you're there. You're a great player. You should be an All Australian next year. <laughs> like, All Australian. Do you need me back down there, buddy? Pushing you up the mountain. Oh no! Like, what the- That's Cruz's job. <laughs> Cruz, my. I know you're coach. being humble, and I know you don't believe those things, but like you know, you're in the best twenty-two. I feel like I am. Yeah. You are. Yeah. So just say it. Okay. Now. Yeah. <laughs> no thanks. Next okay. Question. <laughs> um, what's next for you? Off season? What are you doing? Are you? How's the knee? Knee's good. Are you doing any? I always just like to ask, are you doing anything different? Are you just, you know, focusing on what are you focusing on? You're getting obviously married. getting married. Yeah. Exciting times. It is very exciting. So, yeah, that's all. Uh, beautiful grace. Yes, beautiful grace. That's all grace happening well. um, very, very soon. So, still a little bit to do, but uh, that'll all be done. But, um, no, I, I mean, the off season, I feel, like, I feel like you can sort of lose connection with your schoolmates throughout mm. the footy season because – you know, your, your schedule just revolves so hectically around your job, so it's hard to fit in with them. So um, catch up with them, play a lot of golf, um, obviously some training. Last year I um, I did some sprints training with Peter Fortune, who 
coached Kathy. The fortune teller. Yeah, the fortune teller. He wants me to play in the midfield, <laughs> so he's not the fortune teller. <laughs> so that he uh, he coached Kathy Freeman, which was pretty cool. Um, so we yeah, all know Kathy Freeman. We do know Kathy Freeman. So uh, myself and Dowie did some sessions with him last year, um, and we really enjoyed it. Um, I think that's that's obviously like. Do you see that as obviously an improvement area? Yeah, or, yeah. yeah do you know what's? Well, I wouldn't say that, but I think one thing again, of hindsight of myself, one thing I would have done was record my listings. The other thing I would have done was focus more on like what I was good at, not what I was bad at. Yeah, I like all I ever did was train. Got to get fitter. Got to get stronger. It's like, bro, like you can kick it really far and you're really fast. Like train those things. Mm. Don't stress that you miss 45s all the time. Like just get really good at the things that you want to get good at. Run fast, kick long. Run fast, kick long, bro. Okay. Put the blinkers on. Every it. halfback exactly. in the game now. Exactly. And like- You would have been perfect. Maybe you should make a comeback. Yeah, I think that too sometimes, but <laughs> I can't. Like we've got Darcy here and I don't want to leave the guys. And Do you know I often have this dream? <laughs> I'm not joking. I have this dream where um, I'm playing footy and I have to like stop working here for a year and go back and- play footy and then that's it that's all the dream happens <laughs> that's all that happens in the dream i thought it was going to go more but oh, that's all i, was, I can I remember was expecting something no, like that's, really... that's it and then i found 20 bucks wow yeah. that's the best <laughs> can you email me the rest of that story <laughs> yeah that was really good it must be the best dream ever like, you, must wake, good... well, you must wake an... up that happy oh man it was, yeah it was really good yeah. i actually had another dream last night that just cheated on me were you angry at her? I was so flat. Yeah. I looked at her. She's like, "Good morning." I was like, "Good morning, yeah." <laughs> Do you know what you fucking did to me last night? <laughs> Have you ever had one of those? No. Nah, usually it's the the girls. They wake up angry. Yeah, I know. Well, for me, it was the other way around. Wow. Um. Anyway. Yeah. What were we talking about? I don't know, but I think I was just talking about. Oh, the running. Oh yeah. Talking about yeah. Um. All that stuff. Yeah, it is. An, Im- an improvement area. Um, but I think it really helped me because I, I came back to pre-season, ran PBs. Yeah. Uh, everyone's obsessed with running PBs in pre-season. Yeah. But if you can't get a kick, you don't play. So Exactly. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. You're going to wear black boots next year? Always worn black boots. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I love black boots. You're going to bring back the long sleeve a little bit? I stopped you... wearing the long sleeve. Yeah. The last I wore it against Essendon once last year and the pies in uh, Serge's... Yes, the, the that was a nice was, little, yeah, nice beautiful. little, nice little yeah. touch. So, yeah. now I um, I, I was a bit superstitious because I used to wear it all the time, and I was I couldn't get a kick, so I stopped wearing it, mm. and then I started to play okay. But I actually, I actually heat up a bit in it. Like it's, it gets kind of hot, so I must be working harder than I was because I never. I, used I like to, in the, I do like it for the emotive, emotive games. Yeah, you know, Friday night, Essendon. Yeah, it's a bit, maybe it's a bit I, in that. If it's if it's like six degrees and the AFL decide to put us down in Geelong, yeah. then I'll probably wear it. Yeah, because it is genuinely cold. Um, but no, I haven't worn it a whole lot. And sometimes they don't do the white long sleeves. Oh, I love the white one. Yeah, it looks so good. So I think I think we've got the white long sleeves now. But I don't. Yeah, wear it a best little bit. jumper in the league for sure, man. Yeah, love it. Lastly, yeah, fish, Dow. Two good friends of yours, especially Fish, one of your, your new best mates, one of my really good friends. Love him to death. Looks like he's leaving. Um, yeah. What do you? How does that sit with you? I like, know oh, it's, it's on a friendship level. It's, yeah, it doesn't matter. But like, it's, just, I mean, it's, it's sad, isn't it? It is sad, but it's it's similar to like when you guys left the club because, well, you spend every day with these guys yeah. for what, nine, ten months of the year. Yeah, literally every day you talk to them every off day. Now we're playing golf every off day, yeah. so it's um yeah it's sad. It's going to be a change. Um, I mean, Fish has been at the club seven years, so mm. I spent every day with him for seven years. Dowie's been there for six years. It's it's hard, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> and it's I feel it's a shame that um I mean they're obviously they're going to get great opportunities at other clubs, and um I think their best foot is ahead of them. So I have no doubt that they'll succeed. Oh, for sure. Um, at North and I think Dowie's officially requested to the Saints. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Did um, your dad tell you that? Uh, dad told me that, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. He told me at home. We two yeah. speak about it all the time. <laughs> um, you're, like, you're like having dinner at home and then yeah. like Dowie just comes to hang out with your dad. Yeah. And you're just like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Yeah, it was a good one. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, Naked? Yeah, nude. Oh, <laughs> nude handstands? No, no, no. We're not getting Do you that. remember that? No, I don't. Um, the last one- I wasn't done yet. Oh, sorry. Keep going. It's it's sad. They're it is leaving. sad. No, I'm not. But I'm saying that's funny about this situation is like you say it's sad, but the ruthlessness of the industry is like two weeks into preseason, you totally forget about it. Yeah, unfortunately, and- like that's just how it is. Like you know, we're just we're just custodians of the game. Uh, we I say you guys like no one's bigger than the club. No one like as soon as the you know, you move on. Unfortunately, you move on. And that's yeah. the same whether it's uh, Chris Judd or whether it's someone else. Like, when you're done, you're done. And that's yeah. like, it's almost a beauty in that. Like, And player, player movement so much more. I love prevalent player movement, now. man. I love this period. So I think that we've been really lucky to have such a stable core group of mates that will be friends for life. Yeah. And work through all the shit that the club's gone through over the past few years to hopefully have success in the future. Mm. Um, and unfortunately, because it's such a ruthless industry, some people aren't going to get the opportunity to stay. And um, Fish and, and Dahlia, uh, those those two this year, mm. and, and all the guys that got delisted as well. Like, um, It's cutthroat. It is. And even more so now with um, the the list size cuts. Yeah. Like there's, you know, it's not, I think it used to be, Maybe back when you were playing like 45 or 46, it's now 41 or 2. You fucking think I'm like fucking 40 years old or something. Like I was I was there like four years ago. Yeah. I'm not like, I didn't play cut. with Fev and Cooter. It's cut like, since then. <laughs> it's since then, has it? Okay. Yeah. You know I didn't play with Fev, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Just because my hairline's back <laughs> on my fucking cranium doesn't mean that I'm 50 years old. Hey, and remember? It, I got a funny story about No, you, I don't actually. remember any stories actually. Do you remember when you messaged... Uh, Brattles to catch up with him. Oh my god, we have spoken about this before in the podcast. <laughs> Who was it? <laughs> it wasn't me. It wasn't me. I swear. But <laughs> for those who don't know, someone has messaged Craig Bradley off Bucks's phone. I thought you knew who it was then. No, no, no. No, it wasn't off my phone, Jack. It wasn't off. No, yeah. it was a private number. It was mess- a call. No. So the story is, <laughs> club great. Like, game's record holder, absolute pinnacle of the Carlton Football Club, Craig Bradley, one of, like, everyone's heroes. Incredible person. Um, he is a great person. Anyway, so on round one, we lost, and uh, we were in the training the next day. I think it was on, like, a, sun- a Monday. It must have been a Monday morning. We lost to Richmond. Anyway, I'd played that game, hadn't played too well, and I had came off the track, and I had, like, 15 missed calls on my phone. And I was like... What the fuck? Like, this is weird. I didn't have the number saved or anything. I didn't know who it was. And then there was all these messages saying, Dill, like, Bucks, it's Brattles. Like, where are you, mate? I'm waiting. Da, 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 da. And I was like, what the fuck? What's going on here? So I called back. And he's like, mate, it's um, Craig. I'm at the um, cafe on Ligon Street waiting for you. And I'm like, mate, I've just gotten off the track. Like, I'm not sure what's going on. Did we plan a meeting or something? And he's like, mate, you called me last night and said that you want to catch up for a coffee and have a chat about your game and how you can improve. And I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, did I? Like, in my head, I'm going, I'm like going mad. I'm like, mate, like, I, I'm not sure what's going on here, but I, have you got the right person? Like, I, I didn't call you last night. Anyway, you get where this is going. I didn't call him. You stood Brattles up. No, 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 Jack. I didn't call him. And someone's <laughs> called him off a private number. I said, was it off my number? He said, no, it's off a private number. Hoping, I'm like, okay, you understand now this wasn't me. And as you can imagine, um, yeah, it, it wasn't me. Yeah. And all the boys in the change room are just like swatted around like, what the fuck's happened? Anyway, as you can understand, he was not too happy about it. It's all concealed now. It's all fine. We're, we're shaking hands and he loves me again. But he called your dad, I think, called Shano. <laughs> yeah. So I find like five minutes later, I'm up in a meeting with Sauce, Shano Sullivan and like... Um, Andrew Mackay, like all like <laughs> this, the fucking club greats of like Brattle's best mates. And they're like, mate, why'd you prank Brattle's and say that you want to meet him at a cafe? And I'm like, I didn't fucking do it. Like it, it wasn't me, you man. S- you stood him up. No, I didn't. <laughs> to this day, I still don't know who did that. Oh, that's very good. But like, I still remember your dad looking at me like, why'd you do this? I'm like, I didn't fucking do it. Nah, it was whoever got you. Great guy. Mate, it's, well, they didn't get me. They got poor, got, got poor him. I don't know. Yeah, they got him. 
but he's a byproduct of the gag. Like they got you good. I, I I've still, never seen a bloke more rattled. I was in, so rattled. Yeah, it rattled me. It was yeah. Like your eyes are very open. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, they were like near popping out of your head. It was hectic. It was hectic. It was hilarious. I was about to throw fists of whoever it was. I, you I looked still, like you were going to throw up. I, I was. I was <laughs> lethargic. Um, anyway, never did get that coffee, but uh, I'll have to do it. Hey, I appreciate it, man. It was a good chat. Did you enjoy it? I loved it. Thanks, Bucker. You enjoyed it, Dice? Loved it. Yeah, I enjoyed it too, man. I appreciate it. Have a great wedding. Best of luck in the off-season. Um, we'll catch up, have a hit, have a part. Yep. And I'm pumped for your 2024, man. Big things happening. I really do believe that. Thanks, Bucker. Love you. Love you.